Today we're commemorating the sixth anniversary of the passing of Rama the Ninth. And so we make Marin dedicated to him. But we also remember that he left behind some teachings. And it's good to think about what those teachings were so that we can continue following. I mean, they're teachings of the Buddha that he singled out as being especially appropriate. There's a list of the teachings that the Buddha taught to the, the yaksha, the avalaka yaksha. Four qualities that lead to development, that lead to progress. The first is generosity. The second is self-control. The third is truthfulness. And the fourth is discernment. These are qualities that we should all develop in our lives, both for our own sake and for the sake of the society. In a society where there's no generosity, where there's no self-control, it's hard to say that it's a human society. It's our generosity and our self-control, our, our ability to hold ourselves in line, and not to act on greed, aversion, and delusion, to make it a good society to live in. And on top of that, we are truthful. Again, this is a good glue for society, so people can live together if you're truthful with one another. This means truthful both in the sense of always telling the truth, not misrepresenting the truth. And at the same time, being true to your promises. You make up your mind you're going to do something good and you're true to that promise. It's when people are not true to their promises that things begin to break apart. And then finally, discernment. You have to use your independent ability to look at a situation and see what's right, see what's wrong, see what needs to be solved. Because the tradition we have here that the Buddha taught, it's not simply a tradition where you simply believe what you're told and then do what you're told. You also have to think about what you're taught and told you to do, and reflect on it, and see where it really is good and where it's not so good. In other words, you have to become an independent agent in deciding what's right and what's wrong, based on a training. It's not just going in line with your greed, aversion, and delusion. You get yourself trained so that you can be a reliable judge. This is why we develop mindfulness, why we develop concentration, alertness. All these good qualities that we develop in the meditation so that we can understand the teachings that the Buddha left behind, put them into practice, and see whether we're actually following them correctly and where we're not, where they're getting good results and where they're not, and what adjustments we can make. And this way we make the Dharma our own. So it's not just the Buddhist Dharma, it's ours as well. You think about these qualities. And you can realize that, that this would make for a good society. You look at the society around us, it seems to be lacking all four. People are not generous, people are, have lack self-control, they're not being truthful, and they're not using much discernment. Because discernment aims at the long term. And so many times you see people going for the short-term happiness without any thought about the consequences. But with discernment you think about the long term, and in this way. You create a society that is good to live in, where it's a good society to practice the Dharma. And you think about the people who have passed this on to us, not only the, the Buddha and his monastic disciples, but also lay people who have seen the value of these teachings and passed them on. And so you think about the fact that this was a teaching that, on the 200th anniversary of the founding of Bangkok, this was the teaching that Rama the Ninth singled out as being the most important one to, for the Thai people to pay attention to. And it's not just Thai people, people all over the world, societies all over the world. If we have these four qualities, there's going to be progress and there's going to be a sense that society is really worth holding together. It provides a good vessel for the practice of the Dharma. So when we think of the Brahma the Ninth and the things that he's done for us, you might ask, well, what has he done for us here in America? Well, the fact that he was in ruling over Thailand at a time when countries all around him were falling apart. That enabled the, the Dharma to be practiced there in Thailand. It enabled it. Westerners to come and study the Dharma and then bring it back. So we're indebted to him. So we think about our debt to him and we think about ways to repay that debt. And one of them is, of course, is to practice the teachings that he singled out as being especially useful for the sake of human progress. So we commemorate him. We don't just think about him, dedicate merit, and then forget about it for another year. We try to carry on these qualities throughout the year as well.